Hello everybody and welcome to the first episode of Better Online Presentations. The pandemic has not been kind to us. A lot of us that used to work in offices have interactions with our clients, with our colleagues as a face-to-face -face interaction and are forced to be working from home. What's happening on top of that is that most of our meetings are either happening through a phone call or through a video chat. And that breaks some of the techniques and the capabilities that we've learned to better engage with our audience. Some of the techniques still apply, but we have to learn new ways of interacting virtually with our audience. What we could do in a face-to-face -face meeting with eye interaction and sort of feedback body language that we used to get from the audience does not apply. So we have to keep our audience engaged in a slightly different way. And in this short video, I'm going to show you how we can do that. What I'm using is OBS, which is a fantastic tool to be able to take your video and enhance it and intertwine your presentation with the bits that you're doing. I got inspired by decades of presentations that have been done on TV. So the presenters, the anchors, the news presenters are doing a similar job to what we're doing, except we are a one man band or one woman band. And then we have to learn and leverage some of those techniques by ourselves and do the orchestration in a seamless way that would look nice when we're presenting. So today I have a green screen behind me that is replacing the background that I've got with something that is a little bit more animated. On top of that, what I'm going to demonstrate is how I can superimpose some of my presentation slides on the screen so that I can interact with my audience better. I've got a few shortcuts on the keyboard that I can press to change the way I'm displayed on the screen. And then I'm using a clicker to actually display all the dif different bits that I want to talk about. So let's go through the different softwares and hardwares that I'm using to do this presentation. So the first thing that I'm doing is using OBS Studio, which is a fantastic tool to do live video editing, recording, streaming, and integration with tools like Zoom and Teams. Now, in terms of hardware that you need, you need a good camera so that you can get a good quality picture of the subject, the person presenting. I'm using a Logitech 930. Uh, the 920 is also a very good one. Um, and there's also a bunch of new ones that have come up that are 4K resolution um, and specialized for video streaming, which are really fantastic. Video is one part of it, but as my good friend Gus Gonzalez, MVP in business applications once told me, the video is only part of it. And if the video is not good, that's fine, but just as long as your sound is really good. And that's why I've invested in a nice microphone. I've got the uh, Yeti Nano, the Blue Yeti Nano, uh, which is not a very expensive microphone, to be honest, but of all the elements that I've got in here, that's probably the most expensive piece that I spent money on. And it's simply so that I can have a clear audio and then people can hear what I'm talking about. Because at the end of the day, my message is transmitted through the audio and the video is the extra engagement that I'm adding on top of that. Um, so this is for audio and visual. Now, in order to get a good quality video as well, you need uh, a couple of additional bits. I'm using the green screen behind me, as I mentioned. It's not a very expensive one. It's one that I ordered from China. Um, it's probably about a $10, $10 uh, screen. And I also have a couple of halo lights that are available in there just to have an even light uh, around my face and have a better sort of quality of, of a video. It's not perfect, but you know, given the limited budget that I've got, I think that's adequate for what I'm trying to achieve. Now, in terms of techniques on how am I actually superimposing this information behind the video uh, that I'm actually implementing. So let's have a look at it. So I've got a green screen. I've got my picture on it. Using OBS Studio, I'm actually separating my picture from the background by sort of introducing that chroma key filter that I'll demonstrate in a second on how I'm actually doing that. And in between those two layers, I'm adding my presentations. Now, it's important to have your presentation behind you, mainly because it currently has a black screen as a background. Um, we can do it differently if you want to, and then maybe that's 
going to be a topic for a different session or a different video that I'll do in the future. Uh, but the way I like to implement it and the way the reason why I actually put it behind me is so that I can do what some people refer to as the weather girl pointing. So if I have a few logos or a table that I would like to present and I can point at it and I can say, you know, this is Flow, this is Power Apps, this is Dynamics 365, this is BVA and so on. So that gives us a, lit a, a better interaction overall. So let's have a look at what I'm doing on the OBS side. So as you can see in here, I've got OBS Studio. I've got a few scenes that I've defined. Some of them will have a webcam. Some of them will have the background screen. I can flick between them. I've got a few shortcuts on the keyboard that allows me to do that. But most importantly, I've, I've disabled the preview so that you don't actually um, see that sort of mirroring effect. Uh, but what I wanted to show you is how I set up my webcam. So if I double click on webcam in here, it's just a source. Um, you can see a little bit of green in the back in here. So this is, uh, it requires a little bit of fine tuning to actually remove that green screen. But let's have a look at the filter that I've created. This is the chroma key filter that I've added. If I actually remove it, this is actually what it looks like. And then that chroma key filter just removes some of those bits. And I can fine tune it so I don't have that noise appear anymore. As you can see, this is looking really good. The one hint I want to give you today is that you don't actually have to use the green color that is coming with the out of the box sort of solution. That would be for perfect green screen. Unfortunately, I cannot afford a proper green screen and mine is slightly different. So the way I actually got that color is by sort of disabling the chroma key, doing a color selection. And then in here, you've got a, a pick screen color. So I clicked on that. And I found one that sort of matched what I was trying to do. And then I clicked on it, the one that looks like the most appropriate one. And then I used that one. Then a little bit of fine tuning in terms of sort of similarity, uh, making sure the brightness is correct, uh, the contrast is correct. And then once you've got those sort of worked out a little bit, then you'll be able to display the optimal um, solution in there. So going back to my original position, as you can see, the video is back. It's on a loop. It keeps playing and it is actually uh, replacing the green screen that I have behind me. As I mentioned before, you can have your presentations available in there, just small boxes, and then use your fingers to point to what you're talking about, just to have that better interaction, just like a news anchor would do. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you do, um, please leave some feedback below. Um, all the information that is that all the hardware that I've got in that video, I'll put a description below just so that you can see what it's all about. Uh, but if you have any comments or you'd like to know more, feel free to leave a comment or to contact me through the different social media channels.